Welcome to model 55 of point set topology part 1. So today we shall study the separation axioms, freshness, softness, regularity, etc. Comparing one with the other. So that is why the word hierarchy here, which one is stronger than which? So that is the main question here. Okay. For example, you have already seen that Hausdorffness implies freshness. On the other hand, we cannot compare directly regularity or normality. Okay. Similarly, we can't compare Hausdorffness and regularity. Okay. However, if you mix up these two, okay, then something quite surprising thing comes out. There is a complete hierarchy you can tell. So once there is such a hierarchy, we will have to use numbers to indicate them. I mean, classically they have been done like that, so we have to follow it. There is no other choice. Okay. I want to warn you that there are some authors who do the other way around, which is totally unexplainable. I don't know how they ever got into that mess. Like very good book, like Simmons book has a different uh, connotation altogether. So my connotation is different from that. So you have to be careful about that. So I would prefer that the the terminology I am following is more logical than uh, the other part. So I just want to warn you that's all. So we shall call a fresh space a T1 space and a Hausdorff space a T2 space. Okay, a space which is T1 and regular will be called T3 space. And a space which is T1 and normal will be called T4 space. So this is what I meant by mixing up. T1 and regular will have a name, namely T3. And T1 and normal will have a name T4. T1 and completely normal will be called as T5. Now why these numbers? These numbers have been chosen with some results already in mind. Namely, a Tn where n is bigger than m will always imply Tm. So T5 implies T4, implies T3, implies T2, implies T1. So that is the hierarchy. That looks like a beautiful way of putting it. And easy to remember thing also. Okay. So that is the theorem, first theorem here. Okay. So I will come back to these two things a little later. So I will come back to that one. So first let me go through this theorem. I greater than equal to J. We have Ti implies Tj. Okay. So Ty implies T4 is obvious. T5 being completely normal plus T1. And T4 is normal plus T1. Okay. So completely normal implies already normal. So that is obvious. Though normality itself does not imply regularity, if you put T1 on both sides, there is an implication. Why? Because as soon as T1 is there, okay, 
singleton sets become closed therefore if you have a close a singleton point and a closed set disjoint from that it's as if we are having two disjoint closed subset therefore normality you can assume that there are open subsets around that which are disjoint so t one s assures that singleton points are closed that is why this works all right now t4 implies another one i will come to that one later on of style what to complete so now t3 similarly implies t2 why because t3 is uh, to a closed set and a single point but single point is closed and when you take two uh, distinct points they are both closed subsets so you can apply regularity to get two open subsets around that point so that imply hausdorffness so t1s helps to derive regularity from regularity hausdorffness only under t1 they, they will be equivalent that's what we have seen already otherwise it's not true and already we have seen t4 t2 implies t1 okay now i go back to this uh, other numbers here one number is so i will go back to that one so we are introducing a little more few more numbers here the yeah let me come back here a t1 space which is completely regular remember there was a regularity and complete regularity also we have introduced okay so t1 space which is completely regular will be called as t3 and a half space unfortunately there is no integer between 4 <laughs> and 3 so you have to take 3 3 and half a uh, the whole idea here is that t4 implies t3 and half and t3 and half automatically implies t3 because complete regularity implies regularity add t1 on both sides you get t3 half implies t3 but what is it true is that t4 implies t3 and half because of urizon's characterization remember that T3 and this complete regularity was actually an adapted version of Riesel's characterization, right? So that is the whole idea. So this T3 and half has another name. It is called Tikhonov space. Okay. So there was no integer to accommodate it. So people cooked up this T3 T3 and half uh, name for it. That's all. But there is another thing one can do. a weaker version of t1 okay so let us define that one we have not done that one yet so there is no regularity normality anything it is weaker than t1 space what is it a topological space is called t not space so this time we are jumping not t half and so on t not space if for every pair xy of points in x okay when i pair i mean x and y distinct there exist an open set u containing x and not containing y or an open set containing y and not containing x i repeat given two distinct points you know you may have an open set around the first one not containing the second one or it may happen that there is an open set containing the second one but not the first one it just means that both of them can also occur i am just saying or i am not saying either or okay i am not saying only this or only that no the point is both of them can also occur so that don't have to i don't have to tell that but i want to make that one clear okay in the definition above we have used the word or not either or so it may happen that both are true 
as in the case of T1 ness. In the case of T1 ness, if you have two distinct points, there is a neighborhood about one which doesn't contain the other. Now I don't say which one. Okay, therefore it is applicable to both the points there. Right? So that is why a T1 ness automatically implies T0. But T0 may not imply T1. Okay, so this T0 space is just looks like a cooked up notion for I am high. That is my opinion. Cooked up notion from freshness. There is only one instance wherein some extra hypothesis there, wherein T0 ness will imply T1 ness. We will, we will see that one. Okay, there is only one instance of that one. So anyway, the numbering is completely justified because of our theorem now. T5 implies T4 implies T3 and half implies T2 implies T1 implies T0. Okay, so this complete hierarchy. All right. Whenever i is bigger than j, ti will imply tj. Okay, so here is a, another example now, which, uh, which is a Hausdorff space, but not a regular space. Okay. See, Hausdorff's does not imply regularity. Regularity does not imply Hausdorff's either. But regularity plus T1 implies Hausdorff's. Okay. Hausdorff is the same thing as T2. So here's an example which is house door but not regular. Again, on the real line, we take a collection tau of all subsets U which satisfy the following condition. Given X belonging to U, there exists an open interval I such that X is inside I but instead of saying that I is contained inside you, which will be the usual topology, what we say I intersection Q is contained inside you. It's a much weaker condition. Okay. If the whole of I is contained inside you, well and good. That will be usual topology. But this is much weaker condition. Okay. Nevertheless, this condition defines a topology on X namely R. With this topology, R will be called rationally extended topology. Okay, that is the name. Obviously, it is finer than the usual topology because usual topology satisfies this condition. Right? The whole of I will be contained inside. Once it is finer than the usual topology, it is Hausdorff. Anything finer than Hausdorff space is Hausdorff. So half the, half the part is over. So what we want to prove is that it is not regular. Okay? For seeing that it's not regular, we take f equal to q complement set of all irrational numbers. The set of rational numbers is an open subset here, right? Because take a point in the rational number, take any interval, all the rational points in the interval are contained inside q. That's all. So Q itself is open. 
therefore q complement is a closed set okay now take x equal to 0 or any rational number for that matter let us take x equal to 0 that is outside right so we must find what we must find u and v is a set x belongs to u and f is contained inside v u intersection v is non m empty that is regularity but now we have to show that no matter what u and v are the moment they are open and contain x and f their intersection is non empty is what i have to show to conclude that the space is not housed off we could have chosen any other point we could have chosen any other thing but this is our choice so f is qc so we will try to do this one if it fails doesn't mean that it is uh, regular because we have made a choice here already okay so assume that u is an open subset containing a and containing zero and v is an open set containing all the irrational number that is what we have started so since it is an open subset, u is open subset, there will be an open interval such that this x is inside i, remember x is just 0, you can, or any rational number, x belongs to i and i intersection q is contained inside u, okay. So i is an open interval, therefore you can take any s inside i intersection f. What is f? f was set of all irrational numbers. So it has a lot of irrational numbers. Okay, obviously this s will be different from x, no problem. Then there must be another open interval j such that s is inside j, j intersection q inside v because v is an open subset containing f by, by our assumption. Okay. Look at these two intervals i and j. Okay. They have a common point s. i and j are open intervals. This is a common point s means they are intersecting. So the intersection of two open intervals, if it is non-empty, must be another interval only, right? Therefore, since s in c i intersection j, i intersection j is non-empty open interval. But then this non-empty open interval, intersection with Q is also non-empty. Now, if you look at J intersection Q, that is inside V. But if you intersect I intersection Q, that is inside U. Therefore, this intersection is both inside U and V, so U intersection V. Uh, that is the thing that we wanted to prove, that such open subsets cannot be you know, disjoint. So that proves that the rational extended topology on R is of star, but not regular. Okay. Can it be normal? Can it be normal? No. Why? Because uh, we have seen that T3 implies T4. The other way around. T4, yeah, T4 implies, implies T3. Normal plus T1 implies regular plus T1. So T4 implies T3. But we have seen that it is not regular. But it is host also, it is T1. Okay. So it follows that this cannot be normal either. So let's say corollary once you prove that it is not regular. Okay, now we will take another example, which will give you regularity does not imply normality. This space is regular, but not normal. Okay, we have already seen such an example, but we would like to do this one for 
reason that it is again another modification of of the real topology euclidean topology so in exercise 4.48 we have indicated that the semi interval topology product with itself is completely regular but not normal see we what we have proved is regular and not normal but it's actually completely regular is what we have uh, what we have indicated in the exercise there it was an exercise okay but now we will prove this one the, the other example this is not regular this is regular but not normal okay so what i do i take the upper half plane h all xy belongs to r2 y positive okay the second coordinate is positive is the upper half plane open upper half plane i am denoting l i by l the real line r cross 0 y equal to 0 okay i am including that also in the along with upper half plane and that is my x so this is the closed upper half plane but i don't want to call it that way because this part i can call it as upper half plane but here i am going to change the topology so i am using a different notation x here so here is the the topology coming now two uh, sub bases are declared s1 is equal to set of all open balls okay around points inside capital h namely y coordinate is positive x coordinate anything b epsilon of xy it must be contained inside h therefore the radius must be less than y that's all zero less than epsilon less than y so i am taking all the open balls completely contained inside the upper half plane okay these are standard open balls right the second one is slightly different that is where the the crusk of matter lies they are open balls x comma y center the radius is equal to y not i epsilon so y coordinate becomes the radius of that okay so it is touching the x axis right and one point what is that point x comma 0 so you include that also that point is not there here it is tangential so include that point also that is the that is the that is one of the elements in this set such that x y is are inside h okay so start with a point in the upper half plane take the maximum open ball contained inside that that is the meaning of this by xy okay you can't take bigger than that then it will go below the x axis that is not allowed right so if you take maximum open ball this is what it is then put that point x comma 0 also in that so this is going to be one of the one of the sets inside this s2 so take collection of all of them so that is your s2 now you put the union of these two call that as s a sub base for a topology on x any collection of subsets can be declared as sub base that we know okay so this is sub base for topology on x whatever that topology is it has the property that in the, uh, by the way i have made a remark here namely this is actually a base so let us not bother about this this is sub base is enough for us note that this topology is finer than the euclidean topology because you see on the on the upper half part this is actually euclidean topology okay everything open in the r2 is there and vice versa on the x axis you intersect this balls 
with the x axis what is it it is just the single point x comma 0 therefore each singleton point on the x axis becomes an open set therefore the induced topology on the x axis is discrete in any case it's finer than the usual topology all right therefore this entire topology is finer than the usual topology okay in particular it is hausdorff so hausdorff is theory all right and now we have to show that this is not what this is not normal so i want you to observe this namely if you take by xy union the singleton x0 okay that is an open subset of of this topology it is in a second part of you know s2 part its closure is all those x a b belong to r such that x squared minus a squared actually yeah a square plus y square minus b square less than or equal to y the full you know the full uh, ball will come when a b reigns over all r okay so the closure will be just the closed ball that's all that's what uh, x y is already there but the closure will contain all the rest of the circle also that's all regularity at points of edge follows easily by the euclideanness of of the upper half plane take a point in the upper half plane take an open subset you don't have to worry about a uh, weird open subset but you can take inside that you can take a regular open set uh, open ball right and uh, verify the regularity it's already euclidean space so it's regular so there there is no problem the problem arises when you take x cross 0 inside l namely on the x axis okay for x comma 0 belong to l and u is an open set containing it okay there exists a y positive such that b y x y inside u so this is these are because these are basic open sets now we can take v equal to b y x y 1 union x 0 where the y coordinate the this the y coordinate is less than 1 okay and then check that v bar less than y sorry and then check that v bar is contained inside you okay so even for points on that one you can verify that it is regular to see that x is not normal is our point here now. okay so for not normal we again take a equal to the entire q and b equal to r minus q okay similar to the earlier example okay then we will show that there is no uh, open subsets containing a and b which are disjoint okay so that is what we want to show is similar to r cross l but uh, some somewhat easier maybe you can say for each r in r choose y r positive such that b y r r comma y r y r positive r comma y r will be in the upper half plane right now i am taking a the full ball maximum ball of whatever possible radius that will be uh, uh, radius will be y r put the r also this is an open subset now so such an open subset will be inside g where g is either u or v accordingly where wherever you are r may be inside you or or inside g that means 
rational or irrational. Okay, for both of them, argument is same. Okay, so you can change, you can use such a thing that is always such a thing, so that this uh, this is contained either inside you or inside V according R is inside A or B. Now for N inside N, let us define Fn to be all S inside B, okay, such that Y S coordinate, okay, is bigger than 1 by n. See, for each each r, I have a yr. Okay. I have chosen. So, I, I look at all those s such that its ys is bigger than 1 by n. So, that is my definition of fn. Then, for everything, some yr is positive is what it has said. So, entire of b will be union of fn's. After all, once it is positive, it will be bigger than some 1 by n. So, b is union of fn's. Now, by Baer's category theorem on R, okay, with the usual topology, see, remember what is b? b is set of all irrational numbers. It follows that interior of fn bars cannot be empty for all of them. Right, we have shown that the entire even in, we have actually shown that even irrational numbers cannot be written as countable union of no evident sets because then you can add uh, another set of countable numbers containing R, the whole of R will be written like that. So, that is why one of the Fn's must have property that interior of Fn bar is non empty for one. Then. You fix such an integer now. Okay, so by just by looking at these uh, uh, these definitions of this one, and so far we have not used anything other than that that uh, a and b, uh, u and b are open. Okay, nothing else than that. But now one of these has interior of f and bar is non-empty. Okay, choose an open interval i contained inside f and bar. In interior in the usual topology, these are all subsets of R now. So there will be an open interval containing such one. And a rational number now R belongs to I. If epsilon is chosen appropriately, we claim that for any irrational number inside, see this S belongs to R minus epsilon, R plus epsilon. R is contained inside this in interval. Now, for every epsilon, in, for every s inside this r minus epsilon r plus epsilon, which is obviously I have chosen so that it is contained inside i and which is contained is f n bar, but I am not saying that for all epsilon is true, appropriately chosen epsilon, what we will have is b y r r y r intersection corresponding s is b y s s y s will be non empty. That is a contradiction because these things are supposed to be contained inside two disjoint open sets. Okay, this one is R is rational number and S is an irrational number. Okay, so that will be that will imply that U and V are U intersection V is non empty. Okay, so this is our claim. How to choose epsilon is the point. So that this will happen. So here is a picture of what is happening here. Whatever R and S, whatever they are, there is some YR. Okay. So this whole open ball along with this point is inside U or inside V. That is how you have got it. Now I want that. S and R are chosen such that they are intersecting here. Okay. All that I am chosen. R has been already chosen. S should be chosen close to R in such a way such that the corresponding ball will intersect this one, this one. Because SYs are already chosen. I have no control over that. But I can choose S itself 
closer and closer to R. So how close I should choose is indicated in this picture. Okay. So now I have just worked out the standard uh, mathematics here. So 31 is true. That means the intersection is non-empty. If and only if R minus S square plus yr minus ys square this is the distance from distance from or whatever you see the Euclidean distance is less than yr plus ys square so this is what i am playing r minus s square so go back to this picture r minus s square this distance Okay, minus yr or ry. I have it in ry. Yr it should be yr minus ys. Y coordinate distance squared. So that is the distance between these two. This distance, total distance, must be less than the length of this one plus. And the, the, the radius of this plus radius of that which is yr plus ys. So there is notation difference here. Yr, this is yr and ys. That's all. Okay. So, so that is the first condition. Yr plus ys, they are a radius, some total. If I take the square root of this, this will be square root of that. So I have taken the square of this one, this must be less than. Okay. This is same thing as now simplify r minus s squared is less than 4 times yr into ys. You take this one to on this side, yr square, ys square will cancel out. Okay. Twice yrs, twice yrs will add up, it will be 4 times yr, ys. The same thing as now taking square root, modulus of r minus s should be less than twice square root of yr, ys. Okay, therefore, choose now epsilon to be less than you know, twice the square root of yr by n. Okay, suppose you choose this yr by n, it follows that now what is this n? Remember, this n was fixed so that the interval is contained inside the interior of fn closure. So that n appears here. It follows that r minus s is less than epsilon. If you if you, if you have this one, it's epsilon is less than twice yr by n. That will be less than twice yr ys square. I want this one. I want the last thing. If I have satisfied it's r minus s less than this one, then the intersections will be non-empty. The 31 will be true. So now I choose this epsilon to be less than this one, and R minus is less than epsilon will satisfy this property. Okay, so this is because ys is bigger than one by n. So that ys part disappears here. You see, it's some condition it should not be depending on s, so that I am choosing s. So this is purely in terms of R now. Okay, so that will be automatically less than this one. Because ys part is less than 1 by n. So this completely proves that x tau is not normal. So here is some exercises. Maybe you can have your own exercise also. But uh, I would not like you to, I would not like to encourage you to go on studying uh, just counter examples. Nevertheless, if you are interested in, there is a very good book written on this one long, long back. Okay, I have, it, I have given the reference in right in the beginning. So I will indicate it to you later. So you can read that book. Okay. So thank you. Uh, we will meet next time. Okay.